What's up, you fuckers? So today, we are doing something different. We are not out in the wilderness, the great exploring. If you can hear my boat downstairs, I am very sorry. He's being very loud and obnoxious right now. He's probably hungry. He needs some food. My mom said, yelling at my little brother to go feed it right now. You know about a dude? Yeah, he gotta go feed the goat. Um, but today's video is something different. I thought I'd just help you guys out. Um, I've showed you guys us catching a lot of fish, so I thought... Why not help you guys out today to catch your own fish? Today, I'm gonna be teaching you guys one of my favorite setups to use, um, like just in all around, and it, it will definitely catch you a fish, 100%. You do it enough, it'll catch your fish, and that is the clear water bubble, you can see right here, and a fly. Or, you don't wanna use that. Uncle, get some more goods in here. Get some Campania lures. This one you guys can tell fish like this one because I only get one. It's um abalone. Highly recommend abalone or jumping jack. Um you can use that, that works really well. Um but my preferred method, I just it's tried and true, it's worked a million times for me. Um and I just have a lot of luck with it. It's above one to fly. And this fly in particular is rubble flies. Um I've just stuck with him because he's a super cool guy. He helps me out whenever I need flies and I've caught a lot of and they're proven I've caught a lot of fish on them so I got nothing bad to say about them but I'm, enough of me talking I'm sure you guys how to say it right we're gonna cut this off because uh I already made it but we'll be right back all right guys we're back we got uh interrupted my little brother had a question but so back to what I was saying we're gonna show you guys how to set this up real quick so first of all first of all what the fuck kind of wording is that first off I got these scissors, they're braid scissors, high fish gear. Really badass. If you guys ever cut braid with regular scissors, you know how not much of a nightmare. These ones are torch 30, I've done a bunch of stupid shit with them. But really, really badass. Highly recommend these things. If you're if you're whipping a lot. Um So you got your pole here. My pole's too big to be standing up in my room. It's a 10-6. So, again, okay, this is this is what we're gonna talk about right now. If you guys are going to be doing this, I highly recommend using braid, you see? Braid fishing line. Not no monofilament stuffs. I mean, it'll work with mono. It, it'll work perfectly fine, but braid just helps it be, it just makes it a little easier to work a bubble with braid. I, that's just in my experience. Um, I just found it a lot easier when I'm using braid. Um, also, you kind of do want like a lighter pole. You don't want like a giant, like 13 foot ugly stick dunking pole. Again, it'll work. Nothing against it, it will work, but it's just gonna be a nightmare. It's gonna torch your arm. Um, preferably something from like uh, anything over nine feet, honestly, is my I would say a sweet spot. Um, I like going 10, 10 to 10 six is my my like all time favorite. Um, you get that that distance, but it's not too big to where you can't cast it all day and it hurts your arms. So I got a 10 six, it's actually the pole that I don't like using for this application, but I have no choice because my actual pole for this application has broke. And I only have this one, but it's a 106 Hawaiian custom, really, really good pole. I love it. Um, paired with 4,000 pen fears and 20, 30 pound braid, 30 pound braid. Um, again, that's another thing. I wouldn't go anything under like 20 pound braid. Even that is pushing it because you can hook very big fish with this. I have caught one of the biggest wings I've ever caught to date on a bubble and fly. 15 pounds, absolutely psychotic. That, that shorts will be up soon, so watch for that. But, yeah, so, braided line, highly recommend it. Like a medium to medium light pole, again, highly recommend it. Um, and then like in that 4,000 to 5,000 range, real size with like 20 pound to like, you can use up to a 60 pound test braid, like, um, it don't matter. But if you're gonna use mono, go with like 15, 20 pound test mono. It'll be the same. You just won't get the same distance, but it'll still work. Um, but yeah, so, first off, you put the line through the eyeballs of your pole. You see, eyeballs. I have to fix the eyeball on this one. Okay, we'll show you guys. Like, watch this. So what happens when you put your pole in the fan? You gotta fix them. <sighs> okay, first off, with braid. I don't know how many of you guys ever use this, but this shit can be a nightmare. So I like to do straighten it out. And you put it down. There. Make sure you do the small side. We'll be right back, guys. All right, we're back. Take four, three, four. I don't know. Dogs interrupting me, my brother's interrupting me. This household, it's literally impossible to record a YouTube video. I've, I've had this problem, um, but it's fine. We make do with it. So, back to what I was saying. Bubble. You see the bubble. There's a small little baby side, and there's a big giant hole. 
put the line to the top, the little baby side, okay? Do the little baby side. And you come out the big hole. And you see. Trust. Just trust me. You're gonna have to, you're gonna be filling up the water a lot less if you do that. I've made mistakes where I have a swivel that's too small and I put it this way. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll make it fit. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. You uh, just constantly pop the top piece off and the water all comes out. Um, so yeah, if you don't know how one of these works, it's basically a clear bubble floater. You pop this end in. It's this little piece slides into the bubble. This piece comes out. You fill it up with water and you close it. And um, it's basically how it works. Simple, I know, simple logic. Also, swivel. Hold on, I gotta cut this off. I went whipping today, that's why this is all the kind. So I thought I'd help you guys out. Swivel. Buy one that you know won't go in there. Simple logic, you know, it's just make sure it doesn't go in the thingy. Um, swivel preference, I don't know, that's everybody's choice. I use these ones, people will swear by other ones. I don't know. These I'm about to fly this pole across the damn room is what's about to happen. Um, okay. So, so you got your bubble on your braid, free floating in the wind. Now, you take your swivel, take one end, go through the eye, and you tie a uni knot. If you don't know how to tie a uni knot, I'll show you how to tie a uni knot. So, wait, wait I gotta tap the screen. Sorry if this makes noise, guys. I'm sorry. I gotta see what I'm doing. So, you take your line, okay? See, two ends. Take one, you take the tag end, you make a loop. This bubble is fucking stressing me out, boys. So you take the tag end, this is your main line in my, on the bottom. You make a loop over, see the main line? You make a loop with the tag end. You go in the loop and the main line, you go one, two, three, three, four. Okay, now you pull this. Add some lubrication. Ew. And you pull them tight so you don't burn the knot. That, my friends, is a uni knot. And I promise you, nothing will break that knot. That knot is unbreakable. So now you have this. Okay? You have a bubble and a swivel. See that? Now, the first step of your um, bubble and fly setup is set up. Okay? You can put that on the side. Sorry, got to the screen here. Now you take some some mono. Okay, this is a very, um, what would you say? Controversial, I'm editing that part out. I don't know what a word, but basically a, to a debatable topic. People will swear by fluorocarbon. People will say it don't matter. I'm on the boat that says it don't fucking matter. Fluorocarbon, monofilament, nylon, your mama's hair, it don't matter. It's all the same damn thing. If the fish is gonna come to eat your lure, it's gonna come to eat your lure, it don't matter. It doesn't matter, okay? I'm sorry for the guys that swore by fluorocarbon. Yes, it helps, but I promise you, it does not matter. You're gonna catch as much fish with mono as you would with fluorocarbon. Sorry, guys. But, back to what I was saying, this is a 20 pound test. Again, I wouldn't go anything under 20 with a bubble on a fly, just because that that um factor is in the play where you can catch a 20 pound when you're doing this. It is very, very possible, um, I have got smoked many a times on 30 pound tests where it's just, it's just know that a big fish swing by will bite this, a 20 pound will swing by will bite it, a two pound will swing by will bite it, a one pound lie will bite it, everything will bite it. This is just all time best rig to use when you're whipping in Hawaii, 100%. So 20 pound model, again, don't go anything under 20, you can go all the way up to 80 if you want, just don't go under 20. Um, when I make my leader, I think typically do like, like an arm span, like five feet, or I gauge off my pole, but about five feet. Um, you don't want it too far behind the bubble. I'm going to give you guys some, some knowledge real quick. I learned this plenty, plenty, plenty of uh, trial and error. You don't want it too far behind this because if it's back here, right? Hypothetically speaking, I know it's just close, but we're going to hypothetically say that this is like six feet behind the bubble, okay? The bubble is going, psh, psh, psh. the Omilu is going to come up for the bubble. And by the time he realizes, like by the time he gets up here, in theory, if your fly is like maybe five feet, like three to five feet behind it, he'll come up and see the fly and he'll be like, oh, that's a meal and he'll eat it. But if you have like a six to seven foot leader, he comes up for the bubble and never sees the fly because Domilus don't come up for this. People who say they do, again, everybody has opinions. I've done this kind of fishing for a past 
four years, five years, maybe even more. Um, but they will not come up for this. They come up for this. The noise that this makes, the kachoof, 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 sends shockwaves down to the ocean floor and it attracts the people. They're like, oh, who's that dumbass up there? And they come up there thinking it's a meal and then they see your nice little fishy over here, okay? So, again, they don't come up for this, they come up for this. Closer you keep this to this, the higher chances are you're gonna catch a fish. Some knowledge from Uncle Javin. Thought I should share with you guys. Okay, so back to the video. Again, five feet, Leo. 20 pound test, model, J line. This is brother Dutis one. I stole one from him. Mahalo nui loa, brother. Cut up with your scissors. Again, you need not. I'm gonna show you guys again. Go over here. You go like this. See? You see? You see? You make a loop. Look, you make a loop. See the loop? Loop. Then you go uno, dos, tres, and four. I don't know how to say four in Spanish. Then you lubricate the line so you don't burn them. Then you just pull the bug tight. Like this. Don't ever bite this with your teeth. You guys gonna end up like brother dudes missing all your teeth. You bite this. You scissors. That's why they make them. Snip. Yeah. Now, you get your five feet leader. You take this in, okay? <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm getting all clogged, I'm getting clogged up and dive today. So by the end of the day, my nose will get all back up. Take this in, okay? Sorry, I gotta tap screen again. I gotta see what I'm doing. Take this in, and we're gonna tie a Rapala loop knot. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you guys how to do this one because I still can't, I'm not good at this stuff, but we're gonna try. So you make a loop in the line, like this. You make one loop, okay? You take this and you tag it. Or grab the small fly so it's easier. Okay, I'll grab this one. We'll grab the pretty one so that's easier. I don't know if it matters what way you go in. I don't care. I go from the bottom or whatever way or whatever I'm doing. But this one we're going to go from the bottom, okay? This one I'm going to make it big just so you guys can see. So you got your fly, you got the loop. You take your tag in, you go back through the loop. Like that. Hold up, my screen's gonna go back. Take your tag and you go back through the loop so you guys can see. There's a loop in your tag and through the loop. You squeeze that loop, okay? Now I have the loop in my fingers. And you go, you wrap this around the line. Around the, you wrap the tag end around the main line like four times. One, two, three, four. You take this and you go through this loop, okay? Through the loop. Sorry guys, I don't know how well I suck at this kind of stuff, but you go through the little itty bitty loop. So when you make, here, I'll show you. So you guys see how, oh shit. You guys see how there's a little baby loop in front of the big loop? Take your tag and you go through the little loop in front of the big loop. Then you come back out the big loop and then you pull this tight like this, okay? Again, lubrication, flublation. Now, what I do is I put my finger, you see how there's that loop where the fly is? I put my finger in there. I'm gonna try to see if I can get it in there and show you. So I put my fingers in there and I like kind of like pull that right here. So you see how my fingers in and I pull it like this. And that, my friends, is what we call a Rapala loop knot. So, whew, that was a lot of work. Sorry, guys. You cut the tag in off. You can pull the tag. I, you pull the tag in too, but just for this video, I'm gonna cut it off. You pull that, make it all tight, make everything all tight. But reason why I do a Rapala loop knot instead of just a uni knot, it frees the fly up. Like you can see how it's like just free. You see how it's free. It gives it a lot more action in the water because it doesn't have a knot holding it. There's just a loop and it can just free. I always put my finger. It can free fly on the loop. You know what I mean? So it just makes it a lot easier for the um, for you to give it a lot more action. You don't have to work as hard. The, the, just the looseness of the loop and the water will make the fly move itself. And this is a really nice fly. It's again, a really badass one. Um, so, with that being said, that is how you set up a bubble and fly ring. So you got your bubble, again, with some braid attached to your pole with a swivel to stop the bubble. And you got like some five foot leader to a fly over here. Then you got your uh, fly on the other end. And you just cast that out and just reel it back in cast as far as you can you like kind of rhythm it you know uh, uh, uh. no but on the real note you give it like some rhythm you feel you find your rhythm with it where you can make it pop but it doesn't skip out the water and i can guarantee you guys you're going to be catching fish 
hundred twenty percent you'll catch a fish and if you do catch a fish using this method please let me know in the comment section below it'd be nice to know that somebody actually learned something um but then if you don't want to say say you're not really trying to target anything crazy big you can cut this off see this fly right say you're just trying to go out to have some fun cut this fly off grab yourself a size i use size 14 bk and hook i got none because mokuli i got taxed size 14 bk and hook okay you tie this on this one you can union knot it you tie that on to the end of here the end of your bubble and fly instead of a fly you tie that hook on and then you can put on a grub like this you can put one of these grubs on combine your lures grub it's basically the only ones i got because they work all these other ones is trash but tie one of these on and you can catch everything again it's just really it's a really versatile rig you can do a lot of stuff with it or you can put a big fly on like this this is one of the bigger ones i got um super early in the morning so what i'll do this is a little tip or not a tackle tip uncle javi you know what i'm saying it early in the morning like super like before like the sun's just peaking or like from like 5 to maybe 7 30 8 o'clock i'll throw a big fly like this when i know the big fish are around i throw a really big fly um usually there's a trailer hook on here but i don't know where this one went this one kind of came off i'll throw a really big fly like this and then after that throughout the day i'll throw a smaller fly as you guys can see the one that i have rigged up a smaller fly um there is a big size difference as you guys can tell one's very small compared to the other one and then um towards that this will be what i throw all day and then at like five o'clock in the afternoon all day till sundown i'll throw a big fly again um just because i know that's when all the big fish are feeding that's when i have a higher chance of hooking a bigger fish and with a bigger lure in the water a bigger presence it might entice the bigger fish to actually come up and bite the lure because i've had times where i know they're in the area i can see them chase my lure or i hook a small peel and i see them chase there's a 20 pound me lose down there and they just won't bite they just nothing i throw out and won't bite so in the hopes that they'll bite something bigger like this is what i'll throw sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't um but you never know every every area is different the areas i fish sometimes they're like little baby lures sometimes i'll have a half pump of peel eat this thing so it all depends but I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I hope it helped. Uh, I hope you guys go out there and slay some fish because that's all I want to see is everybody out there slaying. Everybody out there getting bent hold for breakfast. So, again, bubble fly. Epic, epic setup to use. Um, again, if you guys do use it and get any action, let me know in the comment section below because I really, really want to know. Um, and that's basically it. Bubble it flies. Hit him up on Instagram. I don't know if he still makes them. Uh, pretty sure he does though. If not, I know Charlie's in town carries them. And I'm pretty sure Roy's carry them, carries them in Pro City. Um, my favorite flies to ever to use. I don't, don't use too many other ones. I only use these ones. I haven't used any other ones apart from this. So, Again, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it helped. If any other videos you guys want to see, any other tackle talks you guys want to see, let me know because I got bins of tackle that I can make. You know what I'm saying? So, till the next one. I'll see y'all later. Shoots. All right, guys. I know I said shoots, but one last thing before we dip out, okay? Um, this clip that you guys are about to see is a clip of me catching a fish. This is actually, funny enough, the biggest omilo I have caught ever on a bubble fly. And I had the clip on my computer, and my girlfriend was actually making a good point because I always tell myself I'm going to find the time to put it in and find the time. And what better video than the one that i'm showing you guys how to make the setup um i'm very excited for you guys to see this clip but also very cringe because this was like back in 2018 i was little baby jab and i sounded like an absolute idiot but the clip never seen the light of day so i decided what better time than now where i'm showing you guys how to set up bubble fly that i show you guys that it actually works so i hope you guys enjoyed this clip of me catching the biggest meal i've caught to date um Again, thank you guys for sticking around to the videos. Until the next one, I'll see y'all later. Let's jump straight into it. Yes, sir, baby! Yes, sir, baby! Oh! Oh! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my fucking God! On big boys.
Holy shit, boys. This is a real fish right here. Come on, Jesus, please. Just one, and I'm going home. Just let me land one. It's all, baby!